Located in western New York's Genesee Valley, between the cities of Buffalo and Rochester, sits one of North America's hidden gems. Lutcher State Park is a 17-mile stretch of pristine beauty where the Genesee River cuts through a deep gorge and tumbles over three majestic falls. It's a place where visitors can surround themselves with nature and discover history around every corner. This spot right here is probably a really good one to think about the history of Letchworth Park. We're down on Table Rock, and behind us is the Lower Falls, or the way the Lower Falls is today. And if you look around, you'll see that there are many layers, layers in the rock, maybe layers in the hills, and that's really the story of Letchworth Park. Although the lands of the present-day park have been inhabited by natives and pioneers for thousands of years, it wasn't until one man visited here in 1858 that the park began to take shape. That man was William Pryor Letchworth. Letchworth State Park was deeded to the state of New York in 1907 by William Pryor Letchworth. He was a philanthropist and businessman from the Buffalo area, and he absolutely fell in love with this area and it led him to purchase this area. Uh, William Pryor Letchworth was born of Quaker ancestry in 1823, uh, Brownsville, New York, and moved to Auburn, New York with his family. When he was ready to go out and make a livelihood as a young man, he was apprenticed to a saddlery and harness making business where he learned the trade. And eventually, Mr. Letchworth wound up going out on his own and working for Pratt and Letchworth Company, which he established as a partner. From there, Mr. Letchworth made his fortune. He was beginning to look for a gentleman's country estate where he could live the remaining part of his life. And that's where he came to what we know as present Letchworth State Park. He came across the railroad high bridge um, in the distance over here. At the time, it was a wooden bridge. That was 1858, actually, when he uh, first saw the area, and he started buying up the land in 1859. He had around a thousand acres by the time he was done uh, purchasing land, and that uh, created what we know as Letchworth State Park. Included in his purchase was the Cataract House and the land that would become the Glen Iris Estate. Mr. Letchworth transformed the former tavern into a comfortable headquarters where he lived, entertained guests, and housed his growing collection of art and books. It would be from the Glen Iris that Mr. Letchworth began his humanitarian work. After Mr. Letchworth came to the Genesee Valley here and began to establish his, his uh, gentleman country retreat or estate that is here, he also decided to go into many humanitarian endeavors. Um, being of Quaker ancestry, he felt a need um, to help out his fellow human beings and he was very interested in the local school children here. Because of that, he wanted to help them out and he uh, donated um, some land within the park here and built a schoolhouse, which we have a replica schoolhouse of at the Trout Pond area of Letchworth State Park. Mr. Letchworth spent a good deal of the latter part of his life working towards social reform and new laws that would um, help alleviate the suffering of these as well as people less fortunate. Mr. Letcherth would also become known for his interest in the pioneer and native history of the land he called home. After Mr. Letchworth uh, started buying up the property in 1859 and establishing his estate here, he also got interested in the Native American culture. He learned about the story of Mary Jemison, the white woman of the Genesee, and he also found out the Canadia Council House was in deterioration. So Mr. Letchworth determined that it would be an ideal building to bring up and uh, establish what would be the council grounds here at Letchworth State Park. Mr. Letchworth had the cabin dismantled and reconstructed on the site of the present-day council grounds. 
Eventually, he would bring the cabin of Mary Jemison's daughter Nancy to the park. Also, he would bring the remains of Mary Jemison to the lands that she called home for much of her life. Mr. Letchworth had Mary Jemison's remains brought from uh, the area near Buffalo, New York, where they were in jeopardy of being destroyed and brought to present-day Letchworth State Park on the council grounds um, on the bluff above the uh, present Glen Iris Inn. Eventually, Mr. Letchworth also had a statue erected at the site, and that forms what we have at the council grounds today, which is the council house, the Nancy Jemison cabin, and Mary Jemison's grave site. As Mr. Letchworth discovered, in order to fully appreciate the lands of the park, one must travel back in time, back before the first pioneers settled the valley, back even before the natives ruled the land, back to a time when the land was covered in a sheet of ice 